Mr. Buffett, Mr. Munger, um, my family's been associated with Berkshire since 1968, so I asked this question um, with a great deal of respect for your integrity and your wisdom. I work as an inner city school teacher where there is a rising and pervasive sense of hopelessness. When I ask my students what would make you happy, their predominant response is a million dollars. As some of the richest men in the world, I wonder what your response to them might be. And as a second part of this question, the philosophical underpinnings of capitalism have largely ignored a systemic perspective involving issues of ongoing depletion of limited global resources, exploited to sustain a market economy, widening gaps between the very wealthy and the severely impoverished, and an international view of America as a country whose primary values are greed and imperialism. As we move into the 21st century, do you see a need to re-envision re capitalist premises towards original notions of democracy, justice, and humanitarian concerns? You can get all of that. But, um. Well, <laughs> I will say this. I am higher on the existing social order than, than you are. Mm. Uh, I, uh, There's always plenty wrong with a, with a social order. And, uh, and certainly there's, there are places where ours is, is uh, a lot more broken than it used to be. I don't think Warren and I have any wonderful solution to all the problems of the world, but, but, but wishing for a million dollars instead of some more tangible short step is the wrong frame of mind. That isn't the way we got our million dollars. Yeah. Well, I don't. <laughs> mm. Warren might give a different answer. By the way, he's. Uh, no, I, I I would agree with the, the, the I you know the w wishing for a job I, I makes makes a lot of sense to me and and uh, and figuring out how to get one and then going from there. But it uh, there is and always has been. That doesn't mean it always should be, but there, there is a tremendous amount of inequality. Uh, what you don't want is an inequality of opportunity. There, there will be a lot of inequality and in, inability. A market system like we have turns out what people want. If they want to watch if they have a heavyweight fight and they want to watch Mike Tyson, they're going to pay him $25 million for getting in the ring for a few minutes. And it produces what people like and it produces in an abundance and it's done very well in terms of production. It is much better to be in the bottom 20% in this country now than it was 50 years ago and it's better to be in the bottom 20% of this country than, than in any other country. But it still isn't very satisfactory. The market system uh, does not reward, it does not reward teachers, it does not reward, I mean, it does not reward all kinds of people who do all kinds of useful thing in, in, in any way comparable to how it will reward entertainers or, or, or people who can figure out the value of businesses or athletes or that sort of thing. A market system pays very big uh, for something that will entertain them. People want to be entertained a, a good bit of the day and uh, pays better for people that will entertain and educate. I think, I don't want to tinker with the market system. I don't think I should be telling people what they should want to do with their lives, but I do think that it's incumbent on the people that do very well under that system uh, to be taxed in a manner that that, that uh, uh, takes reasonable care of anybody that is not well adapted to that system, that it, but that it's a perfectly decent citizen in every other regard, and that is uh, you know I, I don't want to I don't want to start getting into comparable worth in terms of how I tax, but but I but I do think that somebody like me that happens to just fit this system magnificently, but wouldn't be worth a damn in Bangladesh or someplace, you know, because it, what, what I have wouldn't pay off there. Their, their, their system would not reward that. I think that we get from society, the society provides me, this society provides me with enormous rewards uh, for what I bring to the game. It, it, and it does the same with Mike Tyson, and it does the same with some guy who's adenoids at right for singing or whatever it may be. And, uh, I don't want to tamper with that, but I do think those people who are, who are getting all kinds of claim checks on the rest of society from that, I think there should be a system that people, where people who are not well adapted to that 
uh, system, but that are perfectly decent citizens in every other respect, do not really, you know, fall through the slats on that. And, and uh, I think progress has been made on that over the last 50 years, but I think we're far from a, from a perfect uh, society in that respect. Uh, and I hope, you know, more progress is made in the next 50 years. I don't think the wishing for the million dollars, though, is that, you know, it just, it, it doesn't work that way. It, uh, 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 I think, but if you are lucky enough to have something that this, the market system rewards, you do very well here, and if you're unlucky enough to have something it doesn't reward, you do, you do better now than you would have 30 or 40 years ago, and you do better than in other countries. But it, I, I can see where it seems very unjust to look at somebody else who has just a little different mix of talents that, that can uh, achieve claim checks in a way that keeps them and the next five generations of their family uh, uh, in, a, in a position where they don't have to do very much. I would say that, that, that I like a certain amount of social intervention that takes some of the inequality out of results in, 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 uh, in capitalism, but I hate with a passion rewarding anything that can be easily faked because I think then people lie and lying works and the lying spreads and I think your whole civilization deteriorates. If I were running the world, the compensation for stress under workman's compensation would be zero. Not because there isn't real stress, because there's no way to keep the fakery out if you reward stress at all. There was a great article, and this applies to an earlier question. There was a very good article in Forbes about one issue ago that showed the occupational profile of the U.S. Uh, at a couple of different intervals going back to 1900. And, and one problem you can see just by looking at that profile is that if you assume 20% of the, the bottom 20%, however you measure it in terms of employability, whether it's measured by IQ or interest in working or, or energy level or whatever you want to do, they fit very well most of the jobs that were available 100 years ago. In other words, that you could do most of the jobs, of which there were many, uh, with relatively uh, unimpressive uh, mental abilities. And as jobs have changed, the profile of people hasn't changed. So there are more people that end up on the short end. Now, the good part of that is the society produces so much more that it can take care of those people one way or another. Now, the trick is to take care of them and make them not only feel, but be productive and be, be part of the act. And, and <clears throat> uh, we've got enough product to do that, but uh, uh, the country turns out way more output than, than, than 50 or 100 years ago. Uh, we don't have, we, we're not perfect at, uh, at uh, uh, figuring out how to make the bottom 20 or 30 percent in terms of abilities fit a new changing jo job profile. I, I really recommend you look at that Forbes magazine because it, if you think through the implications of those charts, uh, I think you'll see what social problems have to be attacked. 